Forget Uber Eats, I'm bringing you Uber Eats. Whoever said eating healthy at university is expensive and boring obviously never tried any of these amazing recipes. I'm going to show you how you can eat clean at university and save money. Hey everyone, I'm Uwa and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, it'll be great for you to stick around, so please hit subscribe um, if you'd like to see more from me. And if you're not new here and you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to watch another video. I'm going to do it a bit different in this video. I'm going to be including the price of each meal on the screen. And then in the description below, I'm going to be including macronutrient information and calories. So I don't think any meal that I'm going to show you in this video costs more than two pounds. If you enjoyed the video, please leave us a like and comment down below. Feel free to give me some meal suggestions and I'll try my best to make them as student friendly and as affordable as I can. Um, yeah, so with all that said, let's go with the video. Enjoy! Let's kickstart your morning with an anabolic breakfast packed with fibre, carbohydrates, protein and of course it's something a little sweet. How can you say no to dessert for breakfast? These are all the ingredients you're going to need if you use the pancake mix as well as some sort of sweetener or flavouring to your taste. I use the My Protein Pancake Mix for convenience but this can be a little bit expensive so I'll also link below a protein pancake mix that I made up. Starting off, you want to add in 50 grams of the pancake mix and then give that a mix to get rid of any clumps. You can sieve this in, but I was trying to save some time. And then pour in some water. You want to pour in 60 grams in total, but I did this in bits just so I can like minimize the clumping, if that makes any sense. Add in the remainder of your water and give it another mix until you have a completely smooth mixture. So you can use more or less pancake mix if you want. Essentially, you want a ratio of 1 to 1.2 for the pancake mixed water. Protein pancake mix can get a bit dry so you can also add like eggs or milk to moisten up the mixture if you want. I went in with a few drops of this My Protein Vanilla Flavour Drop which I absolutely love. I use it in my oats, I use it when I'm baking, it's just the hack to making things a little bit sweeter. Add in a few squirts of fry light to a pan and turn the heat on to low to medium and then pour in your pancake batter. I went for mini pancakes, you can have them bigger if you want but you want to avoid making them too big and too thick as well just so they can cook nice and even. Leave them to cook on the low to medium heat for about 2-3 to three minutes until bubbles start to appear and then that's when you know that they're ready to flip. You really don't want to go about like trying any fancy tricks with these and flipping the pan, doing whatever, I recommend just use a spatula. Here is a true test of day three, two. Oh my god, that was an unintentional flip, but it still got there in the end. So once both are flipped, you want to leave it on for like another minute or so and just let the other side cook. And you can also squash them down so they've just got a nice shape. I recommend putting them into a preheated oven on a baking tray whilst you cook the rest. Make sure the oven is on a fairly low heat. All you want to do is just keep them warm and not overcook them. And so on, you just repeat the exact same processes until you've cooked all your pancakes. Now it's time to prepare the toppings. I went for strawberries and bananas. I washed and cut my fruits. I also weighed out my fruits so I can get the correct macronutrient information for the sake of this video for anyone who's interested. So if you want to know the calories and stuff, feel free to look in the description. I didn't really use a lot of this banana because I like mine a lot riper than this, but I just like made these pancakes today that I bought the bananas. So I used about a third of it and sliced it up. And it's time to plate up. So I actually ended up using about 60 grams of pancake mix only because it was 1 p.m. and I hadn't had my breakfast. I was super hungry, but you still do get quite a lot of pancakes from 50 grams. So get your protein yogurt, which actually isn't yogurt, but we won't talk about that, and scoop out about a quarter of it um, and then place it onto the plate. And then get any syrup you want and top it off with this. I know that zero calorie or sugar free stuff might be controversial. This is what I chose to use and I absolutely loved it. Enjoy your pancakes guys. If you tried this, let me know how you found it. Comment down below and also tag me on Instagram. These sweet potato waffles make the perfect breakfast, lunch, brunch, tea, have whatever time of the day you want. These are the ingredients you're going to need. We aren't going to be using the skin of the potato, but just for the sake of it, give it a nice good wash and scrub it clean. Now you're going to want to poke loads of holes in the potato. I really struggle to do this. If you've got a more efficient way, please let me know. This is just to stop it from exploding and bursting when you put it in the microwave. You're going to want to put it in for about 10 minutes, 5 minutes on each side, depending on the strength of your microwave. Um, I put it in for 5 the first time round, then obviously flipped it over and put it in for another 5. Whilst your potato is heating up, go ahead and treat yourself to some nice juicy strawberries. 
After your fruit break, preheat your waffle iron. This may take up to 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the one you've got. Once your potatoes are out of the mikawabe, it should be nice and tender, and then you just wanna peel the skin back and get the insides out. Does that make sense? You know what I mean. This part is literally so hard because the potato is scorching. I struggled so much. If you've got a more efficient way of doing this, go ahead and do it that way and also let me know in the comments because i could really do with a bit of help eventually i just transferred it into the bowl and found that i could just spoon it out and i'm sure as university students a lot of you are good at spooning anyway moving on once you've got all the skin off the potato you just want to go ahead and break it up and let you just mash it into a mush <laughs> I didn't know how else to describe it, but you literally are just mashing it and it's going all mushy. So yeah, just do that. If you did GCC French, you will know that one egg is enough. Go ahead and crack that in there and give it a mix. I think it's actually more efficient with a fork, but I was trying to save up on washing. You could even use a handheld whisk, that's even more of a bolly to wash up. You want to beat it until you've got this creamy texture and then add salt and pepper to taste. Personally, I love well seasoned food, so I never hold back. You want to then spray your waffle iron with some fry light and then just spoon the mixture on as best you can and spread it out depending on what shape you want you can spread it out to the edges but i want mine to have like kind of like a belgian waffle kind of look you know when it's not like a full circle yeah you get what i mean this bit is pretty self-explanatory shut the waffle in so both sides can cook and then you want to leave it for about 12 to 15 minutes again this depends on the waffle iron you've got Whilst your sweet potato mixture is waffling away, take a room temperature egg, add it to a pan with water and bring it to a boil on quite a low heat. Leave it there for 6 minutes or longer, this just depends on how runny you'd like your yolk to be. This is going to seem a bit weird but microwave your spinach on the plate you're going to serve on for about 30 seconds to a minute. This is purely for aesthetics. Once your waffles are cooked to your liking, take them off the waffle iron and present them onto the plate. This avocado was cut perfectly. I was so buzzing. Usually I like mine being a bit more ripe than this, but it still did the job. It was fine. I'm gonna get a bit more spoon action in there and just ease the avocado out of the shell. Place it on top of the waffles and slice it to give it a gourmet look. I always like adding a bit of salt to my avocado, so yeah, I add a bit of salt to that, a bit of black pepper, as well as the waffles overall, just to boost the taste. This part actually hurts me to watch back it hurt me at the time but this egg it failed miserably oh my god it was my first time doing a soft boiled egg and let me say it'll be my last yeah i'm gonna stick to them being hard boiled it ruined the aesthetic of the dish and i apologize profusely man what? you're just ruining it you're ru look at my lips you're ruining it ruining ruin just to give these waffles an extra kick i topped them with some chili flakes and bone apple tea here we are a gourmet ish sweet potato waffle dish made from two ingredients so simple and easy to make and it defo isn't your average university dish i've just plugged you here with savory waffles go ahead and enjoy if you're feeling a crispy chicken burger but you don't want the guilt of eating something greasy or you just don't want to spend the money on delivery then you are going to want to try this first thing you're going to want to do is place a baking tray into a preheated oven these are the ingredients you're going to need. I'd recommend using lettuce instead of spinach, but I'm me and I forgot to buy lettuce that day. Fillings I went for were cucumbers and coleslaw, but you can have whatever you want. You can use the actual Doritos if you want, but we're counting pennies here, so I went for the Aldi version, which are just as good to be honest. Weigh out 15 grams of tortilla chips per serving. I was going to coat two chicken breasts, so I weighed out 30 grams. And then get something that you can finely crush up the tortilla chips with. I went with this seasoning jar and it works a treat. I find that the smaller the chips are when you crush them, the easier it will stick on the chicken. If you've had a long day of lectures or you've been left on red or you've got no new Tinder matches recently, this is just a great way to get your anger and frustration out. We don't play about in this kitchen. These are all seasons you're going to need. Of course, feel free to use whatever you want. These are the ones that I used. I was trying to give KFC a run for the money. And considering I made these burgers for my friends and they didn't realise that it was made from scratch, I think I did a pretty decent job. Once all your seasonings are in, give it a good mix just to disperse the flavour throughout. Now for part two of getting your anger out, you're going to want to slice these chickens. Ideally, you're going to want to butterfly them, but first of all, I cut this one into two because it was huge. This is what I call value for money. Aldi sold it as two chicken breasts, but really I got three. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. As if I actually just said that. <laughs> 
cover the chickens in cling film and part three of getting your anger out you're gonna want to beat the sh this is just to make sure the flavor seeps all the way through the chicken breast and so they cook nice and evenly also stops them from shrinking when you're cooking them especially if you're baking them like we're going to do or if you put them in the freezer I forgot to say but as you're making your um, seasoning mix for the tortilla chips you're going to want to use half of that like seasoning mixture and put it into a separate tub or bowl and make your egg wash mixture ideally you would use a bowl for this as it's just so much easier but I'm a lazy student keep mixing until this resembles something that you'd see on the pavement on your walk home from a night out mmm yummy Take your butterfly chicken breast and dip it into your egg wash. You want to absolutely soak it in, cover both sides thoroughly, double dip, triple dip, quadruple dip, do whatever you've got to do. Just make sure your chicken is swimming in that egg wash. This is a good opportunity to ask yourself, what came first, the egg or the chicken? As you ponder over that, dip the chicken into the tortilla chips, press it down firmly so the tortillas can stick. And like I said, it works so much better when the tortilla chips are as small as you can get them. Spray a baking pan with fry light and put your chicken breast to one side for a bit. You can even do this a few hours in advance and leave it in the fridge to marinate. Now we're going to go on to make the chips. I use half a potato but use as little or as much as you want. Wash your potato and then cut it, cut the round edge off so you've got a flat surface. And ideally you want to cut these into like one centimetre um, strips going across and then cut them into rectangles that are about one centimetre in width. I cut my other potato up and then put it in the freezer to make into chips at another time. Add a few squirts of fry light into the bowl and then season the fries to your liking. Could boil the potatoes about five to ten minutes to soften them up before putting them in the oven but honestly I forgot to do this and they still worked out fine. Add your potatoes to the baking tray, coat the chicken and the chips with fry light so that they crisp up and then whack them in the oven with the chicken and cook on 200 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes, flip them over halfway through. Toast the brioche buns on the lowest heat for about a minute when the chips and the chicken are almost done. Point of view, you burnt your chips. Oops. Let's plate up. So I added about 25 grams of coleslaw to each side of the brioche bun. I keep on saying add as much or as little as you want. I was weighing things out for the sake of macronutrients and to get the prices per meal as accurate as I can for you guys. Add your lettuce or in my unfortunate case your spinach to the burger. Add the rest of your fillings, literally whatever you want in there. I love having loaded beef burgers but when it comes to chicken burgers I keep them nice and simple. You can substitute the coleslaw for whatever sauce you want. I opted for coleslaw as I thought it's just a more satiating option. I can't lie my mouth is actually watering looking at this. These burgers are so good I've actually started meal prepping them. The macros for the burger alone without the fries are great. So to meal prep them I coat the chicken on one day like a Sunday where I do my meal prep and then I freeze it and then whatever day in the week I want to eat it I'll just whack it in the oven. It's definitely something I recommend you try doing as it's a healthier and cheaper option to get in a takeaway. Again if you try this let me know how you found it. Be sure to tag me on Instagram and comment below what you thought. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found these recipes tasty. I'd really love to know what you think of them. So please don't be shy and let me know. Also let me know if you want to see more of these videos. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to see more from me. Bye guys.